Hey, how's it going? John Connors live from Connors Music continues on Wednesday nights. <clears throat> and it's looking like we're going to keep this going. I think uh, I could safely say for the month of August, for the rest of the month, we've been enjoying this. Been getting great feedback. We really appreciate it. Um, not just online, but in store too, which is great because you can, of course, come into Connors Music now, check out guitars, shop, chat about gear. <clears throat> but for those of you uh, that want to sort of preview stuff before you come to the shop, you can do it at connorsmusic.ca, of course, and then we love to chat about a gear, a little bit of gear here while we're playing some tunes on Wednesday nights here at the live stream show on our Facebook page and YouTube channel. Please share it. Please comment. Jump in. I had a lot of fun last week, uh, specifically the uh, comments were, uh, were coming in like this, for example. Hey, Dan, I say back. So... <clears throat> um, I've got my ring light set up. That's going to, I, that's got to stay like, again, you know, I showed it last week. I won't get into it too much today, but without with, right. So let's keep some light on this subject and hi, Kate. And we got lots of people viewing. I can see the numbers climbing already. This is great, but say hi, shoot your questions in, shoot your comments in as we go. Uh, cause that's lots of fun. So just a little rest of the rundown of tonight set up. I'm going again. Hey, Phil, how's it going? I'm going again with the Aston Stealth mic for my vocals. <clears throat> I like its uh, presence when I'm not like right on it, although I can get right on it. Uh, it is pronounced Cali. What did I say? I can't remember what I said. Cali. You have to remind me what I just said where I pronounced it. Cali. Hmm. Anyways, hi, Todd. Oh, capo. Ah, capo or capo. Okay, so we're going to get into that. And Aaron says, hey, Todd says capo or capo. I say it's both, and I'll explain why in a second. Both are correct. Um, so the rest of the rundown of the gear, Callie was a typo, Todd says. Uh, everyone gets so excited. Sometimes you type so fast, and then I'm like, hm, I don't know what you're talking about. That's okay. Typing errors happen. We are all human. Uh, so Aston Stealth mic, I love that I don't have to be right on it. I'm running that for the guitar today because we're going to be chatting capo slash capo today. I did plug it in. I wanted to make sure you got a clear uh, signal from the guitar. And I'm plugged in again through my Fishman tone deck. So I've added that little reverb that you heard there. Um, and a nice volume control. If you can't hear something that you want to hear, make sure you put it in the comments. I can turn the guitar up, I can turn the mic up, I can turn both down. I won't mute. If you're not interested, just go to some other YouTube channel or other Facebook page. Um, okay, so uh, the term that I used in the title of this was the Italian term that they believe was uh, sort of the original call of it, like the title for for this capo, capo that we've now come to know and love. Uh, and use most of us as guitar players and I'll explain it too for those of you that don't know and love capo slash capos yet <clears throat> um, and it meant uh, the head of the neck stock head of the headstock um, and that sort of makes sense still today because when we are playing guitar this is the head here like this whole thing is the headstock and this is the nut and this is the vibrating portion of the string all of this and typically to change the note, uh, we're going to press our finger down. That changes the vibrating length of the string, which raises the pitch. <clears throat> the pitch can raise by shortening the length of the string, vibrating portion, portion of the string, or by the thickness. That's why we have thick strings and thin strings. So that's the physics of guitar sound. <clears throat> the capo allows me to play a chord and then put the capo on. It'll cover all six strings. I can use the same shape and the pitch gets raised. And I'll explain a little bit more as to why that's really beneficial momentarily. Um, so again, why is it capo or capo? Like if it's taken from an Italian term and then anglified, uh, you know, t to fight over which way we should pronounce it now, I think it's sort of tomato, tomato. So there you go. I, I, I call it a capo, and I unfortunately it may come across as I correct people when they come in and say, I'm looking for a capo. It actually happened today. They said capo. And I said, oh, yeah, we have a lovely assortment of capos right here. And then I realized, oh, that sounded like correcting. I said, by the way, capo is fine. You know, that's no problem. So there you go. 
Um, okay, so on with it. So the reason why we're chatting capos so much today is because the uh, Diderio uh, Ned Steinberger designed tri-action capo and the artist capo are going to be going on sale for a the rest at Connor's Music anyways for the rest of 2021. So starting well a little bit today and a little more tomorrow, um, they're going to be instead of uh, thirty two dollars, they're going to be down uh, at twenty four ninety five. Uh, so you don't have to rush. Don't worry. That sale price is going to be good, like I said, for the rest of the year here. And and they've done this to put it right down in the price of other capos um, to really compete. They probably didn't need to because these capos have some additional features that would be more valuable, arguably. But now you can get it at the same price as lower price capos, but still, of course, get the added features. So here I'm going to show you on a brand new package one. You can see I've got the new price already. Of $24.95 on it and uh, it's a tri action because when you squeeze it it's not just single spring loaded you can see there's lots of movement going on there makes it pretty easy to squeeze um, this is where the magic is is that I can adjust the tension of it and uh, so that means when I'm placing the capo which I'm gonna do in a second because I'm gonna play a song um, if you're getting uh, not enough pressure, you can increase it. If you're getting too much and it's pushing your guitar out of tune, you can lower the tension. It has a handy pick holder. I've got the older model that does not have the pick holder, but the new one does. So you can slide your pick in there and have a, a pick handy. Um, and then there is higher end models. I'll talk about that one in a little bit as well. So what's this? Capo makes it hard for me to play a B7. Yeah, this is, uh, this is an issue. I don't know which capo you have, um, but a more slender capo is beneficial with chords that have a lot of stuff going on right on that first fret. So let's let's chat B7, because guess what, Todd? I'm going to use a B7 in this first song. Uh, isn't that great? So here, positioning the capo, you want to get it like kind of close-ish to the fret, uh, but not too close, not too far away. Similar to the placement of a finger. closer okay and if I found I've got my sweet positioning but let's say okay I'm gonna lower the tension here I'm getting that buzzing sound oh that would mean I don't have enough tension but this capo we can adjust that so I'm gonna bring it up till that goes away but not so hard that it's now pushing it at a tune with a slender capo with this like this one I think I can get a B7 okay. I've got room up here. That's just me. Uh, but some of the chunkier capos, the ones that are up top, might get in the way because that index finger is going to hit it. All right, on to some music. This, uh, I'm going to do uh, two songs here on Capo 2, both by the same artist, a great Canadian artist. I'm playing these on my Canadian-made Larabay guitar. Um, what else do I need to say? I'm going to play two and then we'll chat a little more. I can see you lying back in a satin dress In a room where you do what you don't confess Sundown, you better take it If I find you be creeping round my back stairs Sundown, you better take it If I find you She's been looking like a queen in her sailor's dreams And she don't always say what she really means Sometimes I think it's a shame When I find me the better but I'm feeling no pain Sometimes I think it's a shame When I get feeling better when I'm feeling no pain I can picture every
says this is a great tune. I agree. It's great with an electric guitar player, you know, the solo bits too. But I'm by myself tonight, so you can just imagine those. can see her looking fast in her faded jeans She's a hard loving woman She's got me really mean Sometimes I think it's a shame When I get feeling better When I'm feeling no pain Sundown you better take care If I find you creeping around my back stairs Sundown you better take care if I find you be creeping around my back stairs Sometimes I think it's a sin When I feel like I'm winning and I'm losing again There we go, Sundown by Gordon Lightfoot. So Todd says, great tune. Jess, hey, how's it going? Welcome and thank you. What can I say? It feels good to be called the best. Nice compliment. I appreciate it. Gordon Lightfoot, he's the best. A uh, couple, I'm going to give you two quick Gordon Lightfoot stories uh, that I thought were kind of, thank you, Ross. I appreciate that. Uh, so one, one Gordon Lightfoot story. I was, uh, my wife and I were attending the Mariposa Folk Festival. This was a few years back before the Connors Brothers played there. We were just, just there as uh, people that enjoy and love music and wanted to hear music. And they were doing a Gordon Lightfoot tribute um, workshop. So there was multiple artists on the stage. They were all playing songs by Gordon Lightfoot. And uh, I thought that was super cool. We were really enjoying it. And then the uh, one of the artists announced that Gordon Lightfoot was in attendance watching it. Now, for those of you that are familiar with the Mariposa Folk Festival, you'll know that he is he frequents it. He, he's uh, up in the Aurelia area and, and loves to be there. He shows up. So he like he's going to be there kind of thing. You know he's going to come at some point. But he's there watching the tribute show. I imagine being one of those artists and playing a Gordon Lightfoot song with Gordon Lightfoot, Lightfoot standing right there or sitting right there enjoying it. He just did a little wave and a thumbs up. You know, great job, guys. So I thought that was amazing. Uh, and Kim and I were sitting just like 20 feet away from him. So that was pretty cool. Um, and, and the artists did a great job. They kept it together. Again, I would have been... Freaking out, I think, a little bit. Um, second, Gordon Lightfoot's story was pretty cool. i got to just recognize some of these comments here. Great applause from Steve. Thank you. Uh, wonderful human being. Thank you. And music puts me in a happy mood, too. I do music all the time. That's why I'm always pretty much happy. <laughs> applause from Donna. Thank you. From Kate. Keep it down, John. I can't hear Dave. <laughs> Rick is uh, one of our... Lucky uh, guys to get an in-person lesson time here at Connors Music. We're just starting that, putting our toes in the water uh, with limited availability. And I guess I'm so loud singing Sundown that I'm interrupting his lesson. Anyways, any tips for when you move the capo to the seventh feet? No, I knew you meant fret. It's okay. Uh, stay uh, for Here Comes the Sun. Okay, that's a great example. It uh, gets very tight for chubby fingers. Yeah, it's just it gets really hard. Now, I am going to go up there later in this uh, um Live stream show today, so we'll see how that goes. Um, so second Gordon Lightfoot story um, is uh, we were partnered with an organization that was doing uh, a charitable auctions. They did them two years in a row. I mentioned the other one a few weeks ago because they got a Larave PL1 uh, signed by Commander, Commander Hatfield. So we got the guitar for them, uh, and we, of course, like did it at cost for them so that they could just get it at the lowest price possible. Uh, got um, Chris Hadfield to sign it and then auctioned it off, which was super cool. And it was important, of course, to get an appropriate guitar. Um, love you too, Rick. Uh, an appropriate guitar for them to sign, not just some random guitar. That that was important to the organization, um, and it was important to us if we were going to participate. So the PO one is a guitar that Chris Hadfield had in space. So he was, of course, happy to sign that model. It was super cool. Um, and then uh, they came to us and said, we have a connection where we can get Gordon Lightfoot to sign a guitar. Which one would you recommend? So I did some research and there was a time when he played the Epiphone, Epiphone 12 string. And if, for those of you know, he often plays 12 string and often capo too. Uh, and um, so we tracked 
down an Epiphone 12 string for them and Gordon Lightfoot signed it. And it was actually, they were selling auction tickets for it at Music in the Streets that year. So uh, kind of a cool uh, thing. And it was neat that, again, he connected with them, signed it, and uh, to have them auction it to raise funds. And it, I think it was for Sick Kids Hospital. So my problem is tuning. When you put the capo on, do you retune once it's on? Not capo friendly. So there's, there's multiple things. I do want to address that right away. Um, because there's multiple reasons why that could happen. One of them is the tension issue. That, that's what I was talking about. The ability to adjust the tension uh, allows you to not put so much tension on that it pushes the guitar out of tune. So that, that could be your issue if you have a capo that's not adjustable tension. That's where the tri-action or the artist capo from Diderio could come in handy. Um, but the other thing is that, you know, if your string action as you move up your neck gets higher, then it's it's going to go out of tune when you play, whether you play or capo anyways. So if that becomes your issue, uh, then I'd recommend you bring it into our service department. Dave does amazing setup work, if you haven't heard, uh, and he can get your action lowered so that it's wonderful to play all the way up the neck. And then when you capo, it's going to be more in tune. Um, and if we just kind of test this theory here on the tension thing, let's just prove this. I'm going to just do it right now. Okay. So I've got my tuner on. I hope you can see it a bit there and I can see it. So I'm tuning my E string there. And if my tension is too high, I'm just going to add some unnecessary tension here and put it on. You can see it's now showing F sharp, but sharp. And even, okay, that's going to polytune mode. There we go. So you see F sharp, but sharp. We don't want that. So now I can lower the tension on the capo. And there, you can see it went in tune. And I may want to bring it back up just a little bit. And there we go, still. There, oh, it's a magic game. almost like tuning your capo to your guitar. So that's, there we go. Okay, so I hope that answers your question there, Phil. If you're using a, a single spring capo, they're more likely to be the ones that would push you out of tune. Or if you have the multi-tension capo like this and you haven't uh, got it set to the right tension for your guitar, then try adjusting it. See if you can get the tuning in. Uh, but again, if it's your action, which is referring to the string height to the fingerboard of the guitar. If it's getting pretty high as you move up the neck, it's going to be out of tune. So, another Capo 2 song for you here. This is a long one. <clears throat> Let's see if I can get through it. When the skies of November turn gloomy, with a load of iron ore, twenty-six thousand tons more than the Edmund Fitzgerald weighed and tea. The good ship is true, was born to be true. When the gales of November came for the ship was the pride of the American. Coming back from some mill in Wisconsin As the big freighters go, it was bigger than most With a crew and good captain well seasoned Concluding some terms with a couple of steel firms When they left fully loaded for Cleveland And later that night when the ship bell rang Could it be the north wind they have been feeling? Electric guitar player again. Wind in the wires made a tattletale sound, and a wave broke over the railing. And every man knew, as the captain did too, it was a wind. 
Each of November comes to live. The dawn came late and the breakfast had to wait when the gales of November come slashing. When afternoon came, it was freezing rain in the face of a hurricane. When supper time came, the old cook came on deck saying, Fellows, it's too rough to feed ya. At 7 p.m., a main hatchway caved in. He said, Fellas, it's been good to know ya. The captain wired in, he had water coming in, and the good ship and crew was in peril. And later that night, when it Lights went out of sight in the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald. Does anyone know where the love of God goes when the waves turn the minutes to hours? I'll say they'd make Whitefish Bay If they put 50 more hours behind her They might have split up Or they might have capsized They may have broke deep and took water And all that remains is the faces and the names Of the wives and the sons and the daughters In the rooms of a rice water mansion Old Michigan steams like a young man's dreams The islands and bays are for sportsmen And farther below Lake Ontario Takes in what Lake Erie can center And the iron boats go as the mariners all know With the gales of November in a musty old hall in Detroit they pray in the maritime sailors can be Times for each man on the Edmund Fitzgerald. The legend lives on from the Chippewa down of the big lake they call Gitchagumi. Superior, they said, never gives up her dead when the gales of November come early. That was fun. Oh, I enjoyed that. Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald. And I was checking out the comments a little bit out of the side of my eye while I was playing. And so I'd like to respond to a couple of those before we keep going here. All right. Hold on. I'll tuck that one over here. I do have my cheat sheets, if you're wondering. That's what's over to the side here. So, oh, Phil says thanks, and I appreciate that. I hope that helps. Renee, Rio Static's cover of this was mental, and I agree. It's mental. I love it. Uh, it's interesting because they sort of... <laughs> they, they really grabbed a different feel on it. Uh, but I, I really dig it. Um, interesting side story about that. Uh, 
Dave Bedini, a member of the Rio Statics, has um, a book called Writing Gordon Lightfoot. And the basic uh, premise of the book was that uh, they had been in Ireland, the Rio Statics, they played there. And uh, at some point, things went not great. The band wasn't getting along well. Uh, you have to read the book for the details on that. <clears throat> and uh, um, they sort of came back in a sour mood. And Dave Bedini was being interviewed. And he said something along the lines of, uh, I was talking to somebody, uh, you know, they were asking about the cover of The Wreck of the M Edmund Fitzgerald. And he said, I was talking to an old Irishman in a pub who said it's just, that song is just a ripoff of an Irish song. Uh, which, you know, whether that's somewhat true or not, whether that feel or melody comes or derives a little bit from a, uh, an Irish tune, that is fine. Um, but uh, it's not a ripoff. But he was in a bad mood. The band wasn't going well. He said this. He regretted it after. But anyways, Gordon Lightfoot apparently got wind of this comment and said, well, Dave Bedini can... So he felt bad and he started writing him letters to apologize. So that's what the book's about. Plus he digs into the music scene in Toronto, uh, in the seventies, which, uh, particularly, again, I mentioned, uh, Mariposa tonight, uh, that was part of that music scene. And so him, his discussions and thoughts on that time of music in, in Toronto, in the Toronto area, because at that time Mariposa was being hosted on Toronto Island. Um, really spoke to me because I just participated in this festival and really immersed myself in its history. So there you go. Uh, Real Statics, check out the cover and go buy the book, Writing Gordon Lightfoot, and read it and then tell Dave Bedini I sent you. And uh, hi. Oh, he says, hi, Mike. That's cool. <laughs> uh, thank you, Phil. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, it is an awesome song. I agree. Thank you. Well done. Love that. I appreciate this. Guys, you're amazing. This is helping me feel great about doing this um and sounds like a good read it is indeed i'm currently reading the tropic of hockey by dave bedini as well which is also a good read and my dad just finished uh key on and me so like just get all his books read them all they're all, all awesome in my opinion okay so the question was about bringing that capo way up the neck so let's see, see how it does set the way it was when i go capo six for this next not Gordon Lightfoot song. We're gonna. That's it for Gordon Lightfoot tonight. Um, so I'm gonna check with my tuner and see if it's still somewhat in tune. So we're getting a little sharp, you know. Uh, not too bad actually. Look at that. But I am getting a little buzz on my G string, so I want to increase the tension a little bit. Will I have to do that every time? That sounds pretty good. Uh, we have to readjust your capo or tuning every time. Hopefully not. Hopefully you can find that sweet spot where as you move it around, you don't have to make any changes. Um, Cause that's not fun to do on stage, especially like it's not fun to do anyways, but if you're on stage and you want to have nice smooth transitions and songs, you don't want to spend time doing that. So um, there you go. You know, again, find the sweet spot. All right. So this next song, <clears throat> is by a female artist from Newfoundland. I caught wind of her because I borrowed my sister's car one day and just hit play on whatever the CD was in there. And um, that's an endurance test. I miss this. Yeah, it is an endurance test. <laughs> it's like running a marathon, but for musicians. And uh, remarkably stable. And there you go. Uh, and really, like, I think, um, I wouldn't say there's a brand that is... Uh, more trustworthy or not, it's about getting the right setup on your guitar, and I'm glad to hear you have it, Renee, because that really helps uh, as you move the capo to get good tuning is to have good action. And that's adjustable on most guitars, uh, of every Taylor, uh, Larvae's, most guitars now have an adjustable neck. Um, so that gives you the opportunity to get your action set just perfectly. Uh, so anyways, borrowed my sister's car and listened to the CD while I was driving. It was so great. Uh, and then uh, we bought tickets again. Real sta these things all come together every night. So we saw the Real Statics um, at Massey Hall. I brought my daughter. It was her 16th birthday, and I was like, "Are you sure this is what you want?" And she was like, "I'd love to go to a concert." So 
her and I and some friends went to Massey Hall. We saw the Rio Statics and this artist, Amelia Curran, was opening for, for them. What a great night. Uh, and actually, uh, the Rio Statics show, the Massey Hall show, is on YouTube. And if you look closely at the end, uh, they pan the camera in the audience. And you can see my daughter Morgan and I up in the balcony um, along with Connor and uh, Joe McLeod was there. Um, and you can, and Dave, I think, and Bernadette, and you can see us up, uh, in the, in the balcony, maybe not Dave. Anyways, doesn't matter. It was great. Um, ah, check this out. Uh, this is awesome. It was a great way to spend my 16th there. Story verified and, uh, had to scoot, keep rocking. No problem. Thanks Todd. And, uh, for those of you, you can check out, uh, if you're not able to watch it live, you can watch this after it's up on the Facebook page, easy to find on YouTube as well. Another favorite of mine. <clears throat> so anyways, Amelia Curran, uh, this one's Capo 6, uh, usually sung by female. And then I did, so Bernadette and I have covered this together and I did the harmony, uh, but I'm all by my lonesome. So I'm going to do it and just sing the melody and let's see how it goes. Okay. <sighs> sing it while I was singing it I felt okay about that but you got to go check out the original and listen to the whole album find the uh, I can't remember what album it's on something about uh, I can't remember anyways find the album on Spotify don't listen to the one song listen to the whole album do that as often as you possibly can Kate says she loves Amelia Curran and uh, Luke I could maybe do Fleetwood Mac but not tonight I don't have it prepped but Fleetwood Mac in the future uh, this is a fun one. It is a fun one to play. The changes are cool. Thank you, Phil. And Kate says nice. All right, so I'm going to try something a little different here. Um, this is going to be a potential a cappella, no, uh, karaoke track for you. So I'm not going to sing this next one. I just wanted to play 
I'm going to do the verse, chorus, verse, and chorus of the song. <clears throat> uh, and it's capo four. So we're going to move around again and see how well this capo holds up. Again, for tuning is the main thing we're looking at. There we go. So the Diderio capo. capo. This is the uh, PWCP09 adjustable tension. That's the key to it is that I've got the tension set right not to push it out of tune. And don't apologize, Arnold. Thank you for joining us. And um, again, you know, those of you that don't catch it live, it's uh, I spoke with somebody today who said they just watched the whole show on YouTube after, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I love the interaction of it live, so, you know, this is great. Oh, there you go. Thanks. That's awesome. So the album's called Hunter Hunter. Go check it out. The whole thing's up on Spotify, or, you know, go and get the CD if you have a way to do that. That's a fun way to do it. Or I bet you could get it on vinyl. Oh, that'd be cool. Now I'm going to look into that. Okay. Anyway, so this next song, it's called Invisible Ink, <clears throat> in brackets, Rebecca's Demo. And this is uh, from a show called This Is Us. It was written by Siddhartha Kosla. I hope I said that right, and Taylor Goldsmith. And I thought it was extra sweet because Taylor Goldsmith helped write it. I think he was one of the primary, like, anyways, it doesn't matter. They both wrote it, but... Uh, and he's married to Mandy Moore, who plays the character of Rebecca on This Is Us. And he wrote it um, for her to sing. And he said it was neat to get that connection because he felt a connection to the character through his wife, Mandy Moore. So sweet, uh, awesome song. And if you don't watch the show uh, yet, uh, you know, check it out. Just have uh, Kleenex nearby because it, it just makes you cry every episode is sort of what happens. Um, so there you go. If you want to picture me like... I just like tear up a little and then my wife looks over and goes, are you crying? I go, I'm not crying. Are you crying? And of course she's crying. And then I am crying. This is us. You can check it out. Um, so let's do a little bit of this. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to talk. I'm going to do it. And then that way you can sing along with it right now if you know it. If not, uh, ask me for the lyrics or just find them online. And uh, you can sing along with it. Again, find this video on YouTube. Uh, it, we're at what the, uh, it doesn't matter. Um, here we go. Invisible ink. Okay.
cut the ending a little short, but that's the basic idea. So that's Invisible Ink, Rebecca's demo. And I've seen these things like posted on Instagram from this TikTok, which I'm not getting. I don't think I'm going to go on TikTok. But one of the cool things I've seen people do is take a video and then like do a duet with an artist. So I thought if I do this, you could kind of do it. You could sing along, maybe shoot a video of you singing along with it. Share it with us. We'll, we'll uh, share it. Uh, hi, John. It is Kyla, and I'm loving... Oh, thank you. That's so nice, Kyla. So you're hanging out with uh, with Arnold, with, with Grandpa, and Phil wants to learn that. So, uh, Phil, let me know. Um, I'll, s I'll send you the sheet I've got, and then, uh, and then you can send me questions about some of the chords because they're kind of cool. And Ross says this is relaxing. Instrumental guitar to relax to. Uh, kind of fun to sing along with this. It's a nice little... So... This uh, Kate is the one who brought the song to my attention, and uh, it was great because I was able to find a live video. So thank you, Kate. Um, and Kate's been working on it. So, but yes, now you could just practice the singing with it, Kate, and take a break from the guitar, and then go back to the guitar. Uh, Donna says it's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kate. Phil, this is great. Ah, you got to master Instagram before. Yeah, I know. I'm not good at Instagram. I know. I'm a master at Twitter, though. If you want to follow me on Twitter, I think it's John Connors 9 I am clever there. <laughs> Anyways, okay, we're going to do one more song and then call it a night. Um, this one's to prove the benefit of the capo. So let's take this old song that was covered by many artists in many different keys. And if I had no capo and I only knew my clever uh, G, C, E minor, D and A minor chords, or not even just knew them, but knew that those were the ones I wanted the sound of. Oh, and Arnold says, oh, or Kyla, one or the other. Anyways, <laughs> um, if uh, if um, I wanted to use these chords because they've got that open string sound to them, um, and uh, and it's not in the right key for my voice, then then what would I do? So this is what I would do. I'd sing it in the wrong key. And I'd sound like this. Last night I had the strangest dream I ever dreamed before. I dreamed the world had all agreed to put an end. So, actually, this wasn't that bad, I guess. But that's really low for me. I'd be fighting that key uh, and singing way at the bottom of my range and, and maybe not getting the power spots that I'd want. So I think we did this one. Uh, like, as you move up um, a semitone or a fret with the capo, you're moving your key up a semitone. So, like, uh, key of G sharp, well, A flat, then uh, A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D. And somebody earlier asked about capo seven. So let's try capo seven. And that means I'm gonna play it in the key of D. Now I could transpose all the chords and that might work, but this might work too. Um, the version I love of, well, I love a lot of the versions of this song, but Joe and I did a uh, cover of it for our Simon and Garfunkel night. So this was uh, taken by that. Maybe we'll release some videos from that. It was a YouTube stream show. Um, so watch for that coming up from the Connors Brothers. We'll probably do that. And also on that note, uh, we're going to be playing on Lake Simcoe on a boat. So if you have a boat, hopefully we'll see you Saturday uh, in the early evening. Um, we won't play Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald because that would be freaky. <laughs> but we'll play some other water theme songs while we're out there. Last night I had the strangest dream. I ever dreamed before I'm gonna pick it up I dreamed the world had all the greed to put an end to war I dreamed I saw a mighty room the room was filled with men and the paper they were signed and said they never fight again And when the papers all were signed And a million copies made They all joined hands and bowed their heads And grateful prayers were prayed And the people in the streets below 
and round And the guns and swords and uniforms Were scattered on the ground Here we'd have the banjo solo picker, picture Joe doing it My night on capos uh, featuring the Diderio Tri Action Capo, which now officially connorsmusic.ca you can get for the great low price of $24.95. That'll be on until the end of the year. And then the Artist Capo will join it on our website hopefully tomorrow. So keep an eye out for that, um, which gives you some other uh, angles and approaches and features. And so check that out. Um, and color options will also join this on the website. I think tomorrow so uh, again that's pretty cool if uh, you want even like a cooler high-end one I want to show you this one too it doesn't have the benefit of the trigger quick change that you saw me doing where I can just squeeze and and I can tuck this one on the headstock when I'm not using it it doesn't work like that you've got a, a thumb screw over here that you got to tighten and loosen to change it but this pro plus capo the this part of the capo here feels really cool like a finger it's got like a gel material to it so it's most like a finger on the strings so another cool one not on sale um, but if you want one that has that benefit uh, particularly good for fine tuning uh, if you're going to be doing studio work so uh, Jess I'm glad you exist too because I love the comments and the support I really appreciate it thank you for the applause there Kate thank you uh, have that capo on my cello banjo there you go the world is amazing. Well, thank you so much. So thanks, everyone, for joining in tonight uh, and supporting the live stream. And check out the connorsmusic.ca for the capos. And Phil says, another great show. That's good. That's all I need, another feather in the cap. Uh, and so far, I've yet to repeat a song. And we've been doing this for a little while now. So I'm going to see if I can keep that up uh, with new songs every night. Hey, love you too, man. Have a great night, everyone. Thanks again for tuning in. Stay well.